DK Metcalf, 1.6% body fat. <sighs> really? And it got me thinking. Zacharias Metcalf, the NFL prospect wide receiver out of Mississippi, aka Ole Miss, recorded an astounding body fat reading of 1.6 to 1.9% body fat. However strange this sounds, is this at all possible? And if so, is this healthy? So if you want to hear my verdict on the matter, go to this time point. At first glance, it does seem impossible. But let's look firstly at anecdotal evidence. Here is a photo from college, and as you can see, he is incredibly lean. We know that he was attempting to cut before the combine, however, does not look lower than 2%. Here is a picture of Andre Musna, a bodybuilder who was reported to be lower than 2%. Regardless of the fact that Musna is dehydrated in this photo, there is a striking difference in look. Let's assume that. DK is lower than 2%. Could this be genetic? Well, his father was an NFL offensive lineman. And for his mother, I don't have much information on. She might have been very lean at one time, but certainly is not now. There is some evidence, but I can't verify it, that she might have been a shot putter when she was younger. But we have sketchy evidence of this. So the only thing I can say is that T is probably not the father. Dun dun dun. No, I am your father. Only joking, by the way. So let's talk about the methods used to measure body fat percentage. There are several techniques that can estimate body fat composition. Skinfold measurements, bioelectrical independence tests, which use a small electrical current to estimate the amount of water in the body, and then extrapolate a fat figure, and tests based upon displacement of water, or air in the form of the bod pod. How good are they? Well, the last method referenced, the bod pod to which the NFL uses, is probably the third most accurate method. Dual energy x-ray absorption is the most accurate of the cheaper methods, and is thought to be nearly as accurate as MRI or CAT scans at the moment. Must rephrase though, there needs to be more evidence to find out its accuracy levels. However, these methods are not perfect, and many researchers like Nessa and Costello, who focus more on calculating heavy water in the body, have their own preference or preferred methods to which they think is more accurate. One thing to note about is that the bod pod often underestimates body fat percentage by up to 3 to 5%. So DK's body fat percentage could well be more than 4 to 6%, which would seem plausible when we look at his photo. However, this would be apparent across the whole contingent of NFL wide receivers in the draft. We know that depending on the sport, that endurance athletes have very low body fat percentages, with the exception of long distance swimmers and other anomalies. Some power-based athletes can hold around 2% body fat. Oh no, a speed skater at the last Winter Olympics had 2.8% of his body consisting of fat. So non-asthetic athletes have been known to go low in terms of body fat. The average amount of body fat in the US is 22% for men and 32% for women. In the UK, they have a broad definition, 19 to 26% for women and 10 to 20% for men. Although most health experts believe a healthier body fat content for an inactive individual is 15% for men and 22% for women. These are those who partake in the recommended daily allowance or less for physical activity. So how do these athletes achieve such lean physiques? It takes a long time to achieve and maintain these low levels of body fat. It really comes down to balance. Energy in equals energy out. So there's two parts to this, caloric deficit and caloric surplus. So a caloric deficit is where there is more energy expended than what there is coming into the body, and a caloric surplus is the opposite. Is this a safe level? In essence, 
yes and no. The likelihood is that DK Metcalf is not 1.6% body fat all year round. In the off season, there is a strong likelihood that his body fat percentage will increase while his muscle percentage decreases. But yet again, this is me surmising on his nutrition and physical activity levels during the off season. There are a whole host of individual differences to account for. Athletes still have to take in adequate amounts of protein to maintain muscle mass, and they still have to take in adequate amount of carbohydrates to maintain optimal training intensities. If they do this properly, they can maintain a heavy workout session and lose fat without compromising their performance. Football is an interval-based sport. The player is required to compete in a number of short sprints and power-based activities before having a often longer-ish break, burning more carbs in other words. When those stores deplete, your body has to use something else, i.e. fat, but it could also be protein. For athletes to maintain a high level of performance and low body fat, it means they have to have a really good macro and or caloric balance in their diet in order to maintain their health. However, you should not be dieting, especially before competition. Any changes in weight, if an athlete has that as a goal, would happen much earlier in the training to avoid problems with performance and potential injury. Having a body fat percentage lower than 2% could lead to hormone imbalance, impotency, lack of energy, and unable to repair to muscle and other sorts of ailments. So, do I think that DK has less than 1.6% body fat? The answer is probably, yet probably and most likely not, no. Reason being is that we know from the Bob Pod analysis there is a large range of variants and results and the accuracy is not always spot on. Yet again, he is an incredibly lean fellow who is incredibly talented. If you trained well enough, the chances are, yes, you could potentially be 1.6% body to 1.9% body fat. One thing we can say, I mean this in the best and most politest of sense, this guy is an absolute freak of nature in terms of his athletic ability.